Today we're going to look at a 2018 Ford Expedition with a parking brake malfunction service now message. So the customer states that the message just popped on the cluster one day while they were driving down the highway. And it's actually displaying two different messages on the cluster. The first one is parking brake malfunction service now. The second one is parking brake limited function service required. We also have a flashing red brake light at the bottom of the speedometer. So I'm going to start diagnosis by retrieving all the codes or DTCs on the vehicle. And I'm going to be using 4scan light today on an iPhone. And it's going to take it a few seconds to establish communication with all the modules on this vehicle. And there are a lot of them. Okay, we've got a 2018 Ford Expedition with a 3.5 liter. Let's go ahead and see what we've got for codes in it. Looks like we've got an intrusion sensor code in the body control module and that's probably not going to be related to what we're doing or what we're looking at it for today so we're going to ignore that. And it looks like we've got four different codes in the ABS module. We've got two different C1034 codes for parking brakes. We've got a C2008 left parking brake motor. And we've got a U3000 ABS control module. So for our two C1034 codes, the first one is going to indicate the wrong mounting position of the parking brake. And the second one is going to indicate alignment or adjustment incorrect on the parking brake. These DTCs basically set if the ABS control module can't determine the position of the parking brake motors. Our next code, the C2008, is indicating the left rear parking brake motor circuit is open and this is a previously set DTC that's not currently present is what it's showing. Our last code the U3000 indicates an ABS control module internal failure and this is a previously set DTC as well and it's not currently present. Internal failure codes are fairly common when a module is receiving invalid data or input from a sensor Basically, if it doesn't have valid data that it can use to make calculations, it can't come out with valid output, and it'll flag a code like this. It doesn't necessarily mean the module's bad, and normally codes like this are just ignored until all the other codes are fixed. Let's go back and take a look and see if we have any additional codes in the vehicle. The image processing module has a U0418 code in it, invalid data received from the brake system. Now that code is probably related and it's probably a symptom of what's happening with the parking brake system. If the ABS module doesn't know where the parking brakes are or if they're applied, it can't pass that information along to the image processing module. I don't think this code is anything we need to look into. Once the problem in the parking brake system is fixed, this code will be fixed as well. But unlike the four codes we had in the ABS system, this code does have freeze frame data. Freeze frame data is basically a snapshot of the system, or at least some of the PIDs on the system, when a code sets at that exact time. So this could be useful to help us diagnose it and figure out what conditions this occurs under. Especially since I suspect this code was flagged at the exact same time as all the codes in the ABS system. So if we look at our freeze frame data, we have an exact date and time that the code was set, and that can be helpful sometimes. We have the system voltage, which was 14.5 volts, so no low voltage issues. And the vehicle was traveling at 90 kilometers an hour, or about 56 miles per hour when this set. So let's try and take a look at some PIDs for the parking brake system and see if there's anything helpful in there. So I'm going to go ahead and select the ABS module since that's the module that all the parking brake inputs and outputs run through. And we'll see how many PIDs there are under the ABS module, but I'm probably going to take just about anything that I think is parking brake related. And I'm going to keep scrolling down until we get to parking brake. Okay. Looks like here we have the parking brake PIDs. And if you're not aware in Forescan, you can click on a PID and it will open up a description of it to the right uh, that gives you a little bit of a definition of what it is. For some reason, parking brake request source is reading an error, and I'm not quite sure what that's about. 
Uh, parking brake state is reading unknown. Now that's interesting. I'm going to go ahead and try pushing the parking brake apply and release buttons and see what that looks like on here. So it looks like it is getting an input from the parking brake button. Brake is when I'm pushing the parking brake apply button. Neutral is when I'm not pushing any buttons. And release is when I'm pushing the parking brake release button. So it looks like our switch is working okay. I don't see any problems there. I think it's probably time that we start crawling around on the vehicle and looking for the problem. And since we had a code for the left rear parking brake actuator motor, the circuit open, I think that's probably where we want to look. So I'm going to start with a quick visual inspection of the wiring at the left rear. And I don't really see any visual problems or damage to the harness back here. Uh, usually in the wheel well area is where you'll find that kind of thing. Road debris, rocks, gravel, that kind of stuff can damage harnesses sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the connector off of the left rear parking brake actuator and inspect it for moisture or corrosion. And I don't really see any problems with that. The parking brake actuators used by Ford only have two wires going to them. And they're basically a reversible DC motor. The motor turns a threaded shaft and that screws in to push the caliper piston out and apply the parking brake and it reverses direction to release the parking brake. So I've got one lead from my DVOM connected to pin 13 on the connector for the ABS module. And the other lead is going all the way to the back to pin 2, the white and violet wire on the connector for the left rear parking brake actuator. And it looks like we're at 0 0.2 ohms so that circuit's good. So I'm going to move on to pin 12 at the ABS connector. Uh, that's a blue and green wire that runs all the way to the rear and we're going to be measuring the resistance on that. And I'm using an external wire to get all the way to the back of the vehicle. Uh, Lang test leads, I highly recommend. <laughs> and you can see here the ohmmeter is jumping around over 5,000 ohms on this circuit and that is way too high. It should be under 2 or 3 ohms. So this circuit is partially open or has very high resistance. And I'm going to do one more check here. I'm going to measure the resistance between these two circuits, pin 12 and pin 13 at the ABS connector. And it should be infinite. There should be no continuity between these two circuits. And you can see here, it's jumping around between 5 and 9,000 ohms. So the two circuits are partially shorted together. And just to double check that, I am going to check resistance between the two wires at the parking brake actuator. And from this connector, I'm measuring basically the same thing between 10 and 11,000 ohms. So the two circuits are definitely partially shorted together. So while watching the ohmmeter while wiggling the harness, the ohmmeter starts jumping around when I wiggle the harness at the corner here where the wiring harness goes from the knuckle over to the lower control arm. And after starting to take this harness apart to see what's going on, you can see the green corrosion in the corner here. And if you're not familiar with it, that's the kind of corrosion you see when water gets through the insulation on a wire and gets to the copper itself. It creates this green corrosion. After opening this harness up the rest of the way, you can see one wire was basically corroded completely in two. And it just pulled in two when we tried pulling it out of the uh, split loom. And the other wire isn't too far behind. So here it is after new wires have been installed. They've been all soldered and heat shrank in. And the harness is all taped back up. So let's go back to our scan tool. And we're going to try and clear our codes and make sure they go away. And I see we've got a bunch of additional codes in the ABS unit. That's from having it unplugged. And it looks like we're good. All our codes cleared and nothing came back. One last final check. Let's make sure the parking brake works. So there we applied. Looks good. No warning indicators or lights. And let's go ahead and release the parking brake. And looks like the problem's all resolved. If you found this helpful or interesting, please click the like button down below. 
we got a lot more great stuff coming up, so please subscribe. And as always, have a great week.